Alright guys, so today we're going to be talking about the newly released Star Wars Squadrons, and usually in these reviews I give all my reasons why, and then kind of give my overall opinion, but I don't want you wasting your money on this, so let me just tell you right now, unless you got a VR, or $1,540 to spend, don't buy this game. And I'm going to break it down fully, of course, but I just wanted to say that right off the bat. So I put that at the beginning of the video, because I know you guys only watch about 20 seconds of these videos and 90% of you aren't subscribed so if we could try to get that number up it's free to subscribe you just gotta press the button you don't have to, you don't have to come back you can do whatever you want you're not paying it's free just press one button you're good to go really helps out the channel all right let's we'll talk about the story all right and so the game starts you off in this prologue section lets you make a very limited character and this goes the same for multiplayer but we'll get into that later so you make your character, and you start out as the Empire. There are going to be spoilers here, by the way. And within the prologue, of course, one of the Empire goes and joins the Republic because they can't write an original Star Wars story. And so anyways, you know how it is. The Rebels build a thing, and the Empire wants to destroy it, and they go back and forth. It's a very boring story, if I'm being honest. I got to about the two-hour mark before I just didn't want to play anymore. I played more, though, obviously, but I just could not do anything with this campaign. It's it's boring. It's just a tutorial, and it's a bad tutorial at that. They make you play the prologue before letting you access the other parts of the game. And the problem with that is that they allow you to learn all these things in the prologue, which you would assume is tutorial, but then they teach you a lot more advanced things further throughout the campaign. That are really important. Like how to lock on to different systems and different enemy types. How to drift, which I haven't used in multiplayer, but it looks cool. And just all this stuff that they should have taught you in the prologue. Or warned you that there's more to learn in the campaign. But regardless, the campaign is not great. There's not much there. I don't know any of the characters' names. It's basically just a glorified tutorial exactly like we expected it to be and yeah a lot of people really like this game i really don't like this game if you can't tell so uh we're gonna we're gonna go back and forth here and if you dislike the video that's fine but let's go ahead and move into the multiplayer because this is probably what a lot of you want the game for have already played but first before we go into multiplayer let's go ahead and do graphics because this is kind of a overarching topic that applies to the whole game and so the cutscenes, which you weren't going to want to do for these, for some reason they have film grain on. I don't know why any game would opt to have that on. Go into your settings, shut that off. That looks terrible. Alright, that's step one. Step two, except that this game just doesn't look that great. It looks fine. I'm not saying it looks bad, but it looks fine. Some of the animations in multiplayer kind of whack. Ships have the same problem that Battlefield has, where once they explode, there's a lag time between the exploding animation and the actual flying animation is not a smooth cut between the two and we'll get into more like bugs and stuff later but i just want to say that personally i think the graphics are fine they're good for a vr game which is what this game is but um yeah so let's just move into the multi so let me just explain how multiplayer works first and i'm sure you guys will be able to pick apart my problems with it before i even get there so there's two game modes dogfight which is essentially team deathmatch and fleet battles which is the big one that they've advertised you go back and forth attacking each other's support and capital ships pushing each other back and forth fighting for morale destroying ai and enemy players in order to get more points it's kind of like the newest game mode that they added to battlefront 2 where you hold the command post on the uh, ground and then once you do that, whoever has more points, you go up to that person's capital ship and destroy it, except it's just all in space. That's the best way I can describe that game mode without giving you a 30 minutes. So when you first start out in multiplayer, you have to play dogfight mode until you reach level 5, or I guess you could play against the AI. But in order to play multi real multiplayer, you have to play dogfight first. This is dogfight footage that you're seeing right now in the background. And so we'll go game mode by game mode. The problem with dogfight, right is nothing with the game mode at all it works exactly like it should it's just a dog fight it works well theoretically this is here to teach new players how to play and kind of show off the 
best parts of the game, just the ship combat. But the problem here is a problem that overarchs the whole game, and that's that there's no maps at all, right? They have all these interesting areas and shipyards and bases within the campaign, but for some reason, they only transfer over very few of them to multiplayer. In Dogfight, there were three maps. And you're not even going to get three of them. You know how maps rotation work in games. You get the same map over and over again. That's what happened to me. I thought there were two maps in this game until, you know, ten hours into the game until I got the third one. And the worst part about this is the maps aren't great. So... There's one you just saw, which I'm going to call Satellite. I don't know what it's actually called, but that's what I'm calling it. There's t another one, which is just called Orange, because there's nothing. It's just orange clouds. There's no cover. There's there's nothing there. It's just open. So that one's terrible. And then there's one that is a fleet battle map, and straight from the campaign, just you play dogfight. So there's, there's two okay dogfight maps. And it gets repetitive. When you just play the same exact maps over and over. But that's not what everybody's here for. Everybody's here to play fleet battles. So let's get into that. So if you don't know how fleet battles work, it's basically all for morale, which is that bar at the top of the screen. And you start out with a dogfight to see which side is attacking and which side is defending first. Once that's over, the losing side has to defend their support frigates from the attacking side. If the attackers get through it, destroy them then they go to the capital ship if the defenders kill enough of the attackers and get enough morale then it flips and you go the other way so basically it's just back and forth to see who can destroy whose capital ship first sounds fun it is fun with friends but it has the same problem dogfight has three maps the one you're seeing right now which is the dockyards the one i talked about from dogfight which i call tornado because it's just a big storm swirly thingy You'll see what I'm talking about if you play the game. And then the third one is just a bunch of rocks, basically. And not like this. It's just a bunch of small floating debris rocks everywhere. My problem with that map, I've kind of realized the more I've played it, is a lot of the rocks in the background is red. And the icons for other players are red. So it all blends in. You can't, you can't see. It's very hard to see people. And it's very annoying. So, that map doesn't work great, so really two of the three fleet battle maps are viable options. And so, there's there's five maps in the game, right? There's six, but one of them's a repeat, so I'm not counting it. So, that that's one of the big problems, is you're playing on the same maps over and over again, right? And so, from there, let's move kind of out of the gameplay... Because I guess I'll, I'll give them credit with where credit's due, right? The gameplay works. The gameplay is fun. I feel like the ship should be a little bit faster. But everything that you're seeing right now, from when you join the match to when the match is over, that's enjoyable. It's just everything after and before that, right? And we haven't gotten into that, but that's where we're going to transition in to customization and progression so let's move over to that so the ships all have unique customization as far as their weapons go the actual customization of the visuals of the ships aren't so different but let's talk about the four classes yeah EA it's not eight it's four that just look different they do the same thing. So as you play, you get those points on the left half of the top right corner. They're called requisition points, I believe, and the right one's glory. And so you spend these requisition points on your primary weapon, your left and right, I guess, missile slot, if that's what you want to call them, auxiliaries, right? Then you have hull, different shield components, engines, all this other stuff. This is... The same upgrades for each faction, so it doesn't matter if you're the fighter for the fact for the rebels or the fighter for the empire. It's the same upgrades, and so there's different ship liveries, 
which those are different, and I would say the empires are significantly cooler. There's these decals, which I don't see the point of. Holograms, which is now we're getting into the territory of stuff that actually matters, and this is a point I want to make in a minute, but the holograms and the charms and the keychain things, this is the only customization you can see, right? And we're getting to pilot customization here, but why do I care what the outside of my ship looks? Why do I care about the decals and skins on it? I, I can't see it other than the two seconds they show the ships at the beginning of the match and at the end. Same thing with my character. Again, credit where credit's due aside from the face picker. There is so much customization here. There's so many cool helmets, outfits, and charms, and holograms and stuff. But I can't see any of this. Why would I spend all of these credits and work and grind to unlock all of this stuff... I can't see my character. I can't see my ship. I can't see what pants my guy are wearing. I'm sitting in a ship in first person. And that's my main problem, right? All of the customization is here, but it doesn't matter. And so, normally, what I do when I make a review, right, is I pre-make folders for a game. Combat, story, graphics, customization, bugs, and progression. But for this game, my progression folder was empty because this game, like every other EA game, has a progression problem, okay? So, like I said, as you level up, you get those currencies in that top right, the requisition and the glory. But you get multiple requisition points every single time you level up. And it's not an upgrade system, it's more of a pick and choose system. What I mean by that is that when you go to upgrade your actual ship parts not the visual looks right all you do is scroll through the descriptions and pick the one you want so however many different options there are i believe it's like eight or something like that that's how many points you need you find the ship you want to play let's say you want to play an x-wing you just need eight requisition points you fully upgrade your x-wing you never got upgraded again go over the tie fighter you need eight more fully upgrade it never got upgraded again assuming you don't do challenges and you only get one requisition point from leveling up which is not true you have to play to level 16 and then you're done with this game you've completely upgraded your ships that's a problem and the customization visually has the same problem because it's 1200 if the most expensive thing i'm about a level 10 and i have i think 2000 now my problem with that is I'm not going to buy a ship livery. I'm not going to buy anything to do with my pilot. I'm just going to buy the three interior cockpit thing because those are the only things you can actually see while you're playing. So if you're like me, you only need 3,600 glory to get, well, if you put it on both sides, I guess double that. But that's all you need to get everything that you can get. There's no leveling up each starship individually to unlock more upgrades and more customization. It's just you get these points for playing, and they give you a lot of them. It's very cheap to get everything. Just buy what you want. And so that leaves the game. If you're like me and you need progression in your games, leaves the game with a very short life, right? And as far as future update, DLC, all that stuff, they've said they're not doing that. So this is what you get. Everything that's here. They're not going to add new maps. They're not going to add new customization, new things to unlock. This is it. Now I could change, but that's what they're saying right now. And so, that's even more of the reason I think it's a VR game. Between just the way the interface looks with the hangar and the debriefing room where you just stand around and you can just turn your head, you can't really walk or anything. The way the cockpit looks and feels feels very much like a VR game. And just the amount of time and progression, I guess, because, you know, when you're playing with your friends in VR, they're going to care and how your character looks and, you know, what helmet and pants, you can see all of that in VR. And so that's my main point with this game. This game feels like the, it was going to be a $30 VR game, and about halfway through development, they said, why not just make this for everything? So they poured it over to console and PC and everything, and then just add an extra ten dollars. That's how this game feels. Now, let's go into an overview of the whole game, and I'll throw out a number that doesn't mean anything because 
they could update this game tomorrow and change everything. So since this game appeals to such a large audience of, you know, older people who love the original trilogy, people who like the prequels, people who like the sequels, or just pilot gamers, whoever, you know, large group of people who could play this game that I'm trying to get at, right? So I'm going to break it down into a pros and cons list right here and make it super simple for you guys to be able to see the bad things and the good things, in my opinion. And there's a lot of them, so it might get sloppy. I'll let you guys enjoy some gameplay while I make my list. Enjoy is getting smacked. Alright guys, so I've made my list, and the pros are the combat, and it's fun with friends, and the cons are everything else. Now, that was a lot of effort for a joke, so I'm gonna need you guys to like and subscribe just for that one, because that was neither funny or worth the amount of effort that it took me to do that. Alright, but seriously though, the cons with this game is lack of progression, worthless customization, crappy story, lack of maps, lack of game modes, so yeah, pr pretty much everything else. But, like I said, once you're in the actual game and playing, it's fun. It's just once you remember that there's no reason you're not playing for anything, you're not trying to earn anything, you're going to be playing on the same places over and over again. It gets repetitive and boring. Now, if they update this game with new maps and maybe something, a reason to buy ship customization and character customization, then that would be cool. Now we're just going to get into, like, stupid little nitpick things. My game crashed, like, twice. You get stuck in things sometimes. You'll crash into a ship and just get stuck in it. But none of these bugs were enough to mention in the main part of the video. So, um, something that I think would be really helpful is on the radar on the left there. If maybe they had the initials of the person's gamer tag or profile next to the name so you could know what teammates were who and all that stuff. Something to identify who people were. Maybe they could add game mode where, and I'm just spitting ideas here. A game mode where you play on instruments only, and everybody has to play on that, because playing on instruments only right now in multiplayer is impossible because you don't know what your objective is. So that's practically, you can't do it. If everybody else has theirs on, you, you're gonna lose. You're putting yourself at a handicap. So honestly, this game isn't worth $40 unless you have a VR, and it's not worth $1,540 to get a VR in the game. So I honestly would wait for this game to go on sale for the total price of free on November 10th when EA Access joins the Game Pass Ultimate list of games, and then you can play this game for free. Don't buy it for Black Friday, don't get it for Christmas, just play it free on November 10th if you already have Game Pass, or spend $5 on EA Access and play it for a day and then never play it again. It's up to you, but make sure that you tell me below what you guys think of the game if you love it if you hate it if you don't know again make sure to subscribe so we can get that percentage up comment and like all your good stuff because you know ea and star wars and disney are going to claim this video because i just put eight seconds of star wars music in it so that's fun and i'll see you guys on the next one